Welcome everybody to another thrilling episode of Home Kid Insider. You've got me as always, Andrew O'Hara here joining me. And fun fact, uh, he is the world's largest collector of Polly Pockets. It is Wes, Wesley Hilliard, whatever you want to go by today. Oh, yeah. uh, Wes, you're joining us again, Pod. Yeah, can't get enough of those uh, tiny houses, which uh, blends right in with HomeKit. Now, if they had HomeKit Poly Pocket houses that you could use uh, voice control, there we go. That's you know, that's a market I, we should I, break I into. I you should create that, but it would mm -hmm. be fairly niche. Uh, I yeah. feel like your audience would be quite small. But Me, hey, probably. just There's yeah. an audience for everything. It just might be one person. So, well, I just, before we get into I just this realized episode, I'm very dim. Oh, come on. You're not that. Oh, you're lighting. Yeah, you, know, oh, you can always yeah. adjust that. I'm, c I'm coming back. Well, while Wes adjusted his light, before we get into the episode today, today's episode is brought to you by ZocDoc. So, heading things off with the news this week, we have uh, the Eve Energy Outlet is finally begun shipping. So, this was announced uh, right before CES. I happen to have one if you are watching the video side of things. I'm holding up the box. It looks like every other Eve product box that is out there, but it's the Eve Energy Outlet. And this is both Matter and Apple Home. So they actually don't have, oh, they do have it. Works with Apple Home on the side. But um, this is Apple Home and Matter certified. Here's what the actual outlet looks like for those that are curious. That's upside down, little faceplate. This is it. It's pretty standard looking double outlet, uh, just sleek and white with a light gray Eve logo at the bottom. Uh, Faceplate comes off and you've got your matter pairing code located on the top. There are two little lights in the center. Those are going to be also buttons to control it. Both of the outlets are independently controllable. So you can turn like on one or the other. You don't have to control them both at the same time, which is like the case with some like surge protector type things that I've seen. So I like that actual independent controls for the outlet. Um, here's the back of it if you're watching on video, but it does require that neutral wire there. Um, the other thing that is great about the Eve Energy outlet compared to some of the other home kit or matter outlets that are out there is that it also has energy monitoring built in. So you can view your energy consumption through the Eve app, just like with the regular Eve Energy and the Eve Energy strip, Energy monitoring built in. You can even create like automations off that. So it's great. Uh, what so do you think of this guy, Wes? Are those LEDs, can I turn them off? <laughs> I don't believe so. I mean, if, I, mean I haven't installed in the, it yet, clearly. But like here on the box picture, they're like that light green color. The In, the in real life, though, have, they're like, just empty LED looking things. I I imagine walking through my home with the lights off and there'd just be green bubbles everywhere. So here, here I'm wondering if maybe they're like the opposite, like they're, they light up when they're off. So that way you can find them to press maybe. them. Maybe they're off the rest of the time. I don't know. We'll find out it when I get a, this thing installed. But It being a smart outlet, I think uh, it's something you probably say, don't show the LED. And a lot of products these days let you do that so that's a that's a hopeful for me because i cover leds in my house with masking tape i don't want to see it so well like i have these ones here in the studio that are from iDevices devices that are the the home kit ones and they were huge in the the home kit space for a while and they have little status leds on them that can like tell you what's going on but those are actual they show up in apple home in the home app as an additional light so hmm. that you can use that light as a programmable status light. You could turn it off. You can adjust the brightness. You can have it change to different colors based on things that are going on. So it's kind of like a nice little touch that you could get kind of fancy with if you wanted to. Right. The only problem that gets weird is if you ever say like, because I'll, I'll do like room commands, like turn off the lights in the bedroom. And if I was using it as a status light for something, it would just turn it off as well because it's a light. So right. it's part of the room space. I mean, yeah. these are clever. Uh, I have always liked the idea of energy monitoring. I would love to be able to just change every outlet in the house. I was doing the math earlier, and it's like $50, and you could assume maybe like 20 outlets. It, it can get pricey pretty quick, but when you're investing in your home, it kind of makes sense. It's a one-time change. It's not like these things are going to go bad um, anytime soon anyway. 
But um, yeah, I wouldn't mind having that kind of information just available, especially around um, larger appliances like a refrigerator, uh, just to give me an idea of what's increasing that electric bill uh, each month. I mean, mine's usually the AC. <laughs> uh, running that heat, especially in the winter, is killer. But I don't know. Um, I think as we go more green energy and there's more people installing these um, batteries in their home, the, you know, the backup batteries, uh, having a way to see what's drawing power from where is kind of essential. It's not, it's not even just a niche thing anymore for fun tracking. It's just like almost necessary. And I absolutely plan on trying to install some kind of system like this. And I think Eve's the go-to. Eve has been very early on the energy tracking. It's only a matter of time before matter enables energy tracking as well. Like we're even seeing chargers, like car chargers and stuff being built into the matter spec, I believe. So like, there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. And I, and I think all that's going to come to the service, like you said, as we, as more and more renewables become like mainstream. And I still want to put solar here. I mean, I know I'm in Ohio, but between like a solar system and battery backup plus grid, you've got a good combination for self-reliance as well as backups in case of storms. Like we're constantly having brownouts and blackouts around here. So having a, a battery backup system would be great. But uh, I think all that's going to eventually come together in, in the home kit and matter world. Right. I, I would love to see, just speaking of that, like I would love to see these larger batteries it, just in general um, be added to Apple Home. I mean, Apple has that green energy monitoring um, system inside of uh, Apple Home now. The grid view is always visible and you you can tap into it. And this, it's this big empty white screen with just the little grid um icon in it and I, I i can't help but wonder if they're planning on doing something more with that space eventually and i think these you know uh energy reading outlets and the smart batteries i mean everything like bluety and uh echo flow those guys are all app connected anyway i wonder if they could flip a switch somewhere that would allow them to show up in the apple home app like seeing my battery levels in apple home and the solar inputs uh stuff like that that would be amazing and i i, I can't help but think that's where we're going to go with this stuff, especially with Apple being so energy conscious. For sure. For sure. Well, next up here in the news, this is, I've not got to try this out, Wes. It, it's been on my plate and I've been so swamped with like video stuff. I have not played with it yet, but there is an actual HomeKit app for Vision Pro available. It's called MySamage. Is that, is that what you would have guessed that was pronounced at Wes? Uh, Ma Mazo Mage, I think they're going for like a magic, a magician. Oh, I see. There's like there's a magic wand in a house, mm -hmm. so I, maybe I'm not that's sure. the angle. Or they're just some sort of French. I'm not sure, but yeah, this app looks a little bare bones. It's interesting, but like <laughs> reading the notes for the app is funny because it's like we can do automations and scenes. I'm like, I can do that in my home app. So they have some interesting stuff here that you can't necessarily um, trigger or do in the home app like they have co2 emission controls uh, for automations which is cool but yes the uh, vision pro app looks pretty uh, bare bones as it is it's just basically the same app ui with some glossy finish but um i'm i'm hopeful that we'll see more apps emerge for apple home i think it's just inter like i'm surprised that we haven't seen more uh even i i mean i guess we're looking at a niche of a niche right we're looking mm -hmm. at people who like Vision Pro, and then we're looking at people who use Vision Pro who really want uh, a more dedicated smart home app. I am glad that Apple put the home app on there, like from the beginning. But of course, we don't have like a Vision Pro version of it. And mm -hmm. like you said, it's 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 fairly basic looking in terms of like what it does. But I'm I'm hoping this sets the precedent, and we're going to see more of this stuff. I'm surprised that Aaron Pierce has not dropped any of his apps. Uh, well. There's interesting Pro stuff yet. people can do. Like there's these things called ornaments in Vision Pro that um, where you have a 2D window, but you have these objects that float around the window that can open up new window panes or uh, like this one weather app has a literal uh, 3D version of the sun that moves across the sky, which is really cool. But um, I, I think there's a lot of clever use cases here. It's just we got to see these things emerge. And um, 
it's always uh, you never really think about it until something like this happens but there's so many app developers that are not in the united states and so many of them want to have their hands on this hardware and um I think Europe's going to get it soon. I mean, there's already rumors of China launch happening by spring. So I think Europe might even happen before China. So I think it's all going to happen back to back very quickly, uh, probably faster than we expected. And as soon as these things are gettable by other developers, we'll see more things there. Because, I mean, developing in that simulator is just not ideal. And it doesn't reveal all the bugs that you could potentially get. So I think a lot of people are just holding back. Yeah, that's definitely possible. Um, I think the other thing with, with home kit apps specifically is if you're wearing vision pro, what do you need to control in the real world while you're doing that? I can tell you what I need to control and it's lights. Okay. Tell uh, me. <laughs> if you, if you guys have ever seen my home, I mean, you can see a little bit of it behind me. Um, I kind of gave up on lighting uh, just a minute ago because it, it, it's a lot to adjust in here. My house is dark. I have this old wood paneling landlord won't let me really paint it or replace it or anything and it absorbs light like no other so i need intense loud bright lights to get anywhere and i have my overhead lights in the office set to 100 percent, and they're those huge candle bulbs uh but they're the white only but for some reason their temperature is super warm especially with these wood panels it's like a mixture of just all the worst things so I can't see anything like I, I put on the vision pro and it's the, just above the noise level, like the light level that it allows you to actually operate this thing, even with the lights at a hundred percent. Um, and my hand tracking gets lost and stuff. So I have to use, I have spotlights for photography. I have to turn one of those on and aim at the ceiling to get the white ceiling to reflect some light into the room for the vision pro to uh, operate properly. That's how dark it is in here. It's ridiculous. So I think I'm going to be investing in some smart lights uh, to brighten up the office a little bit. But I've noticed that um, operating the home from this thing is kind of weird because, like you say, even when you're adjusting things or doing things in the headset, you're only getting half of the brightness through anyway. I just installed these nano leafs behind me. I know they've been in a couple episodes, but um, I don't really look at those with the headset on. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the story is, like you said, for like home uh, inside of the Vision Pro just yet. Yeah, it's just like, I'm like, okay, I don't really need to adjust my blinds because I'm looking through this. I don't need to turn, you know, really don't need to turn many of the lights on. Uh, well, like when I'm in Vision Pro, unless I want just to get rid of some of the grain that's going on in low light scenarios. But mm -hmm. there's not that much just in the home. I guess the one thing that I would like to see is maybe like widgets or something for the cameras. Like just another version of like the live view, like um, what's he called? What's Aaron Pierce's home view or something? Um, right. <clears throat> home cam, whatever it is for all of his uh, the smart home cameras that you can view at the same That'd be time. Smart. Yeah, because then I could at least be able to watch like something going on. If only that actually worked. I mean, it's a good <laughs> practice, but anytime I've ever tried to turn on like a live feed of a camera and just have it loop through, it just here's thirty seconds of live disconnected. Oh, I'm back, and it's gone again, and it's just endless. And that happened just randomly, and I, and it's definitely yeah. like a HomeKit bug, not mm -hmm. uh, not the app. Yeah, because my network's great. I have good new routers. I have a fast connection. I don't know what it is, but it, it's definitely a HomeKit issue. But no, I I th I think we're still early days on this product, and I know people don't tune in to hear about Vision Pro, but uh, it's definitely the topic of the week anyway, as we test these devices out and as we learn there's no permanence to the windows and so yeah you could you could get this really cool app that lets you add like uh virtual switches around that control lights and objects put timers over the stove and uh walk through your whole house and just have all this amazing setup where it tells you what plants you have and when to water them and go to your office and have all these things and have virtual clocks on the wall and then you click on a link in Safari that it doesn't like, and it boot loops. And then you have to <laughs> go through and do it all again because this that doesn't save any of the window states. It doesn't have a real perception of location. Uh, and if you, I, I've noticed too, if you um, place your windows everywhere and then press and hold the readjust button, sometimes it just brings all the windows in front of you for no reason. Yeah, it's a 1.0, but um, I'm, again, I'm excited to see what HomeKit and stuff can do in this space. And, uh, I personally think I'm going to set up some Vision Pro scenes, kind of like what you're describing of, okay, I'm going to put this thing on now. Let's brighten up the room. Let's maybe let in some sunlight. Let's make it, 
usable for this space. Yeah. Well, um, as we move on from the Vision Pro stuff, if uh, anyone hasn't checked out the, the Apple Insider YouTube channel, I just took live a comparison with the Quest 3. So if you're interested in how those kind of fare against each other at massively different price points, go check that out. Um, the only spoiler I'll say is like I have not used the Quest 3 in a long time, and I put that on, and it made me feel so very sick. But do mm -hmm. you know what's helpful when you're feeling sick, Wes? ZocDoc. Um, that's it. <laughs> ZocDoc. That's... That is what helps. With your, it was a little bit of a long train to get there, but I feel like we got there. Uh, it works. But Zocdoc, <laughs> Zocdoc is fantastic. It is a Zocdoc is a free app and website where you can search online. You can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. So that's a it's a free app that you can download and find doctors that are in your network, which is huge. Like if you ever try to find a doctor for a specialty or something, and then you're like, wait, does my insurance take them? Are they out of network? All of that stuff is compounded, especially when you are already not feeling well or already struggling just to find a doctor in the first place. You can then go and find like all these actual reviews that are verified from real patients that have seen them to find one that makes sense for you and what that you're looking for. Um, you can even do telehealth appointments. So if you don't wanna go in somewhere, like you're not feeling great, you don't wanna go somewhere, fine. Book a telehealth appointment and do it from your own house. We've used ZocDoc many times. My wife has done it to book one at like the local like quick clinic and she needed to go in for something because she wasn't feeling great. She walked right in there, walked past all of the people that were just sitting in the lobby who didn't book an appointment through ZocDoc and instead were just walk-ins. She just did it that morning, was able to walk right in. She walks in the door and they're like, Faith? And she's like, oh, that's me. Goes right back, passes everyone who scowled at her and mm. uh, has been one of our favorite stories about using ZocDoc because it's so incredibly helpful. So, um, Wes, have you ever used ZocDoc before? I have not. See, I have this curse called uh, Veterans Healthcare, and <laughs> I wonder if I could possibly link that up because that would be amazing. One of the most hated things about doing anything related to military or veteran health is it's impossible. Um, it's the worst possible experience you can get, usually just because everyone on the planet is trying to go to the same hospital and trying to get the same appointments. And you're six months out from ever seeing anyone about anything and you're, you know, bleeding out on the floor and they're just like, oh, yeah, come back in a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, with something like ZocDoc, you, like you said, you can get those appointments right away. Find someone with availability that takes your coverage. It's it's pretty uh, useful and definitely better than just <laughs> Take some Advil and uh, see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. So just you give it a try. I love it. You should give it a try. So go to ZocDoc.com slash HKI and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find a book, A Top Rated Doctor Today. That is Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash HKI. ZocDoc.com slash HKI. A little bit, little bit of a tongue twister, but I'm here for it. So... We did have a, a listener question come in from last week, Wes. So is it possible to connect pre-installed standalone blinds with a wall mount controller as in a new apartment with HomeKit? So now, as we answer, like I think we have to speculate. Kind of thing. Well, that's that's what I'm thinking a little bit. Like there's there's we're gonna have to make some assumptions here. First off, there's so many different options, right? In terms of like what like blind setup. Yeah. What do you mean have? when you like, say blinds? There's, there's a thousand different blinds. You got those Venetian blinds. A lot of apartments have, and then you got your standard kind of things. Uh, some of them don't even have pull chains cause they're those uh, automatic thing. It, it very specific to your situation. Yeah. Yeah. So th there's a few different options, um, that I guess could go. So there's a, Again, I, there's just so many different ones out there. Um, the couple that I know, we know of SwitchBot, right? That does work with a lot of pre-existing, pre-installed stuff. You use SwitchBot, and then that is able to get into um, Bluetooth control with that, and then you just attach a hub. Uh, there's the new Hub Mini that we just talked about, which I still cannot find a link for, so I'm sorry for the people that messaged me saying that they could not find the link for the new one. They like I, we, we heard it was coming, and then I can't find a link for it. Um, but SwitchBot has like those hubs that'll add it into Matter and into HomeKit so that that is an option. Rise, R-Y-S-E, I believe has some smart stuff and they have like an upcoming like 
smart curtain one. So if you've got like slatted blinds going down that need to move to the sides, I believe that would work for that situation. And then uh, even depending on, again, which one you have, Eve has a retrofit option for shades that you can put in. It just goes into the center of your existing shades and can turn them into home kit compatible ones. So there are options for you, Charles. Uh, it just really depends on what kind of setup you have in your home. But yes, uh, take a look at SwitchBot Rise with a Y, the Eve Motion Blinds like installer piece if you have like roller type shades, but you said blind, so I'm thinking it's more like slatted ones vertically or horizontally. But yes, there, there are ones that would make that work. Anything to add, Wes? Well, <clears throat> I decided to um, choke on my own spit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, hopefully. <clears throat> Sorry. You can cut all that out. Wow, I can't speak. <clears throat> that Wes was, uh... has swallowed a fly or something. <clears throat> yeah, you'll see all this in the video. And hopefully uh, we cut it out this time. So anyway, <clears throat> my goodness. Three, two, one. Wow, that was weird. Okay, so <laughs> I'm dying over here. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree uh, with your assessment. There's just so many options. You just if you um, want to email us back, I can't speak anymore. <clears throat> Jesus. Okay, I'm good now. Um, if you want to email us back and uh, let us know any more specific details about what you're dealing with, we could maybe help push you in the right direction. But yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of options that... Uh, kind of hard to go off of just generically saying that you know you have blinds in your apartment so i would definitely look into switchbot that's probably your simplest option a little pricey once you add it in the hub and stuff but uh worthwhile investment in that one sounds good so the last thing and that i want to talk about in this episode that i swear you and i have been punting for weeks and weeks is i want to talk about my new Moen faucet. Okay. I have so, finally so special. <laughs> gotten a new faucet. I am mm -hmm. very excited about it. Um, but it's been at this point, I guess I've got like almost two months of, of test time with it. Um, but yeah, so recently we had a, a terrible faucet in our house and we bought it, which is a very cheap one that the, the owners had put in beforehand and it was pretty, pretty garbage. And it started to like really corrode at the bottom and starting to not work. So like it had to go. So I was looking around for one that was going to be smart connected. And the two biggest ones that I see kind of in the space are going to be Kohler connect. Uh, the connect is with a K because of the Kohler thing. Uh, and then the Moen systems. And what I think is very funny is that Moen likes HomeKit, right? They have HomeKit enabled on like their shower. They have a shower that works with HomeKit, but their faucet only works with Google and Amazon. And then you have Kohler who does not have a smart shower uh, that works with HomeKit. They have all sorts of smart shower stuff, but none that works with HomeKit, but they do, I believe, have a HomeKit enabled faucet. Uh, at the very least, um... Uh, voice assistant, right? Like uh, uh, yeah. at the least on that one. Yeah. I th I think it was a home kit. And, and the thing is, I understand why, because when you can do with Amazon and Google assistants and a faucet is far more capable than what you can do with home. Like with Apple home, I'm pretty sure you're limited to on and off. Like that's it. Right. Um, with Amazon, you can say like, hey, dispense me two cups of 112 degree water and like it'll do it. You could say I need one teaspoon of water or something. I, I can't remember like the lowest well, measurement amount is, but it's very, very small through those other assistants. And that's using their smart home integrations versus with something like this with Apple related stuff. You're probably going to be going through shortcuts and creating app connected um like specific phrases that trigger different <laughs> measurements to go through otherwise you're yeah, gonna you use can't uh, do it at all no there's no okay, shortcuts either oh wow because i know some of these guys have their own voice assistant which is really funny um or like some version of it where you say give me this much but i is it i guess it's all just alexa or, or google right 
Yeah, and those two work natively. Like they work mm. without issue and I have set those up and I have tried them and they work really well. And it's like one of the things that I would use a competing assistant for because I think that is really helpful. Like, and even if you're just, say I'm making pizza dough and I want my water at a specific temperature, like I want it warm but not hot because um, I want that yeast to flourish and I could just be able to say, hey, preheat the water to... 90 degrees, whatever it is that nice. I want it to be at. Yeah. And it would be able to do that. And then it would change color and then I can fill it up and, and I could even have it dispense me two cups of 90 degree water, mm -hmm. whatever it happens to be. Or if you're putting like a, um, a pasta pot on under there, stick it in your sink and say, hey, dispense six quarts of water and it'll go ahead and just fill up your pasta pot and then turn off. And you can continue working around your kitchen. Well, None of that you can do with HomeKit. I know it sounds silly, but think about being in a kitchen and especially if you're juggling a couple of dishes at once and you need a very specific amount of water. And so you have to go over to the sink, turn it on, turn your head to the side and get underneath the cup so you don't get any parallax error and see where it is and make sure you have the right measurements because you don't want too much or too little. This just does it all by a voice command uh, without even looking at it. You, you need a big pot of water. Put the pot underneath it, say, fill it up to this amount, walk away. When you come back, you have the exact amount of water. And yeah, I mean, that sounds silly, but honestly, in practice, I think that would be pretty cool. I just wish uh, Apple Home had a, more integrations. I know. That's what frustrates me is that you can do all of this with the Moen faucet, but none of it with HomeKit. You have to do it all with Amazon or Google. And it just shows one of the biggest holes in home kit and i saw moen out at ces and i was like hey why why no home kit because honestly i would have been happy with just on and off like i know it's not as robust but the ability to just put it under there and then walk away and continue things i can glance over see it's getting full and say hey turn the water off like that would still be a nice thing to have but yeah they don't they don't support that at it's, all so i've noticed um home kit is mostly on off switches. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can integrate all these things, fans, heaters, whatnot, lights, but generally speaking, it's an on off switch. And if it's a light bulb, you get some color controls. And it's been that way for so long that I wonder if uh, we're not due for a revamp. And we've discussed this before. I think matter and other things like that are going to push Apple in that direction. Um, but it goes back to the question of, who at Apple are using these things to the extent that the enthusiasts are because people like us who have a bunch of home kit devices who buy everything that comes out because we want to test every single version or uh, every possible thing that we can put in our home to make smart and make controllable automatable. Um, I wonder if Apple is going to that extreme or if they're really just targeting that, targeting that market that has, a person who gets interested in a smart home goes to Best Buy, buys one smart hue pack of bulbs, and then never touches it again, right? Um, you always see on Nano Leaf and Hue these amazing, uh, gosh, multi thousand dollar light setups in people's living rooms. And I'm like, but who's who's actually doing that out there? Who's going to the, all this trouble to almost professionally light their home to that extent? And I think Apple has the same question, and maybe that's why they're not so. Um, on top of things, but that's why third party apps exist. I've noticed that there's a lot of like really good ecosystem apps that help you tie, tie these things together and get more control and get more scenes and automation into things. Even if Apple or even Kohler or these other companies don't necessarily go that far. But it's just a half step. Like, like mm -hmm. you said, just on and off, like why give us on and off then if you're not going to give us like temperature control um, or which they have for the shower, I believe, but I, but I don't right. know if they do specifically for faucets. And then they don't have like dispensing certain amounts, which they do on other ecosystems. So why why limit yourself in that well, way? Why do I, it at all in that case? I think it's complexity. I mean, from an electrical point of view, a lot of these that, that that's where it gets down to of these being just on off switches. That's really easy. I mean, it's literally binary. You can just but send... But it's for, it's for Moen and Kohler to figure that out of how to right. dispense a certain amount. And they've clearly done it because it works with Amazon They've got some sort of 
they've got some sort of chip and they're processing this information as they get it. So yeah, why isn't Apple targeting that? Or is this is this an API issue or is this a Kohler issue? I I, I wonder where it's going wrong. Obviously, Apple isn't building. I mean, in Apple the doesn't foundation. support it. It's just not yeah. part of the HomeKit spec to dispense a certain amount of liquid from a faucet. Right. That's For just HomeKit. not. Yeah. But I but, Which, but again, I, I would argue spigot, too though because you can do. <laughs> Right. I, I would argue too, you though, that spigot, um, like for your lawn. if if it's not possible via HomeKit, but Kohler and them have the processing capabilities on device or what have you, then Apple does have a solution. It's just a separate solution and shortcuts. But again, that goes back to the app development team. How much are they really investing in uh, the app? And are they going to fork the app from iOS versus Google, where it's probably just this very simple interface? So, yeah, there's again, just the tale as old as time dealing with different ecosystems and different requirements ends up where we are right now with a thing that can do this stuff that we want it to do, just not in the way we want it to do it. And it's kind of frustrating sometimes. Well, stepping outside of the home kit space of the faucet, let's go over some like the actual smart features that you can use, even if you're not using like the Amazon and Google side of things. Um, it is still a smart faucet, and this is specifically one of the motion sense faucets. So there is a little sensor right on the top of like the curve, and you have different hand gestures that you can use. So a swipe to the right is going to be cold water. A swipe to the left is hot water. A swipe down is going to be warm water, and then a push in is going to stop it. So you can actually set these different temperatures in the app. So you can actually set the degree that you want warm water to be. If you want to be a little hotter or a little colder, same thing for like your max temperature. You can just what that hot temperature is going to be at. As far as um, flow goes, it's going to be maximum flow when you like swipe. But if you do two swipes, it'll do a lower flow, which is nice if you're filling up something like an ice tray and you need a little bit more of a gentle flow of water. So that's always nice. Just do two to either directions and it's going to do a lower flow of water. Um, it works really, really well. And you still have control of the, there's like a little handle down there. You can use the handle like you normally would. But um, the, the motion control is so good that you just, or you're going to use it. Like mm -hmm. I, I've used that handle like two times now on this faucet since we've put it in two months ago. And there, I, there's no reason to you're trying to do it, but it's great because if your well, hands are dirty, there's no touch sensitive. You don't gotta touch it with your wrist or your arm and get your thing grubby. It's just a, a wave and it turns on and off. It's fantastic. Do, do you have any trouble remembering all the gestures? I know you just listed them from memory, but is that uh, something you run into where you're like, How, what do I do to get this thing to happen? No, I, because- I could I imagine- mean, well, I left the card there for Faith like the first like week, um, but hmm. she she's it's all knowledgeable now. I mean, it's really just like cold to the right, hot to the left. That's kind of what okay. you need to know. Well, so sense. for the most part, you're going to go cold. And if you at most you got three or four gestures like cold, hot, warm, and off, and it just kind of like that flow. Like hot is always to the left, cold is always to the right. That's already inherent. And then your warm water's in the middle, and then just pushing towards it is going to be off kind of like stop and it'll, it'll a, stop for you. There's a part of my brain going back to like the military where when you walk around the ship, there's these little plastic um, paper holders uh, everywhere uh, with instructions. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you had found one next to a water fountain telling you to depress the handle to get water out of it. And it just makes me think like maybe you need a little laminated sheet with all the hand gestures on it just to be clever. But uh, yeah, it definitely sounds like something you get used to pretty quickly and just kind of remember it just becomes muscle memory but even just for like guests and stuff you you still have a physical handle so it's like the best of both worlds you don't really have to worry about it too much versus exactly installing a, is... you, you just installing a neck that has that just has nothing on it like no physical controls that would drive people crazy but at least this one has uh the backup yeah, and what I think is funny, too, is so Faith was a little overwhelmed at first with all the gestures, and I will say that the gestures are not 100%. They're probably, like, 95. There are times when I go to, like, turn it off, or if you go really quick, like, on, rinse, and try to go off again, like, you are so quick that it, it you need to, like, take a second and then do it, or you barely even moved your hand enough that it was still, like, in frame of the sensor, so it didn't clock it as two different commands. 
So there are times like that that can be a little bit annoying. Or if you're really rushing on the kitchen, you're like, turn turn off and you're like doing this. Uh, it's mm-hmm. like, stop. Just wait. Well, you're dealing with like do a, inf- you're dealing with infrared, right? Basically the same thing that controls like the automatic soap pumps and heaters and stuff in bathrooms. I don't know if it's the same or not because it is able to detect, detect like, you know, direction like direction it's basically going towards you down left right and all that so i'm not sure if it's like the same type of sensor or if it is like just multiple of those sensors that are able to clock you know that direction um more like lidar th- rather than infrared got it yeah so it is interesting that it's able to detect at least you know orientation of your your hand movements and everything the uh the other downside so Faith was like, you know, there's a lot going on. And then it wasn't 100%. There are times where she's like trying to do it and it's not turning off and it's annoying. So I'm like, hey, if, if this motion stuff doesn't work, just use the, the handle. Nope. She still always just uses the motion. So I think it's neat that it's like it's compelling enough that you're still going to resort to the motion sense, the motion hand movements versus the handle because it's far too convenient. So I thought that was really interesting. Even when it's annoying, you'd still rather use that than the handle. The second thing, this is the only downside that I have. The sensor is is quite sensitive. Now, you walking by, that never does anything. But apparently, if you have like a fly in your kitchen hmm. and it flies right in front of that sensor close enough, it can trigger your water to come on. Fun. So in like two months, I think this has happened twice now, but like one of the times was when I was out at CES and Faith was home alone. And she's just sitting in the living room and all of a sudden the faucet turns on. She's like, nope, don't like that. Nope. So that was like a little creepy. Um, We're out a little bit more in the country area. So there are like flies that sometimes get Mm -hmm. inside that are really annoying. And uh, yeah, Yeah. if they they fly and like, well, we've got like manure in that field sometimes. So sometimes the flies can be a bit much. Every time you open the door. I live next to a farm. So I know you're paying. Uh, I think it's definitely one of those things where he, you kind of need to think about your situation before you invest in something like this. I would love something like this, but also have two cats somehow just at complete random, different years, different litters found two different male cats that love water and live in the sink. So if they were to climb up there and activate the motion sensor and figure out they can turn the water on by themselves, they would just never leave. They would just stay there and just lick the water up and, just bathe, I guess. I don't know what they do. They're stupid. But um, yeah, I, I, well, I will say mine has not been set off by the cat. He walks really? across the sink constantly because we actually have a little thing for um, he he drinks milk. He drinks milk and he's he's a prude about it. Like he's mm. like, I don't want that skim stuff. Like give me the fancy milk. Like he yeah, he is very particular about his milk. But no, he's he, so he's constantly on the sink and walking back and forth in front of it, and he has never inadvertently set it off. I don't know if it's because the that is angled slightly up, so like a cat walking in front is not going to be at the correct angle. But even his right. tail flicking in the air, uh, not enough to do it. Maybe it's the hair. I don't. know. Maybe it's blocking the signal. Yeah. Um, you should get one of those Sphinx cats and see if it activates the sensor. Uh, Perfect. Right. So. I have a question for you while we're in the kitchen um, before we close out here. Uh, do you have, now I'm trying to sneeze. So what is wrong with me today? I'm not even sick this time. Um, all right. So do you have other smart gadgets that aren't home care related in, in your kitchen or in your home? Let me give you an example. So I've been shopping around Simple Human. Those guys make really fun products. Uh, for whatever reason, I just... I'm like, man, I really like this trash can. Um, and they they released a motion controlled lid that you can wave your hand over. And there's even one that's voice activated. It's hilarious. They have a video of people dancing around the room throwing trash in it. It's ridiculous. But um, could you imagine owning a voice activated trash can or would Faith uh, get up and leave at that point? As long as it has that physical control, I'm, th- mm. I'm sure it would be fine. Yeah, I'm sure it would be fine. Yeah, my girlfriend's already made it clear that I'm not allowed to get a voice-activated trash can. But the motion sensor <laughs> one would be okay. Yeah. I mean, the Simple Human stuff is really nice. I This is not smart at all, but we have, like, a paper towel holder. And then the mm-hmm. rod in the center, actually, like, you press it down and it pops up. And it's a spray bottle with, like, clever. countertop cleaner. And just, like, slots mm-hmm. back in and, like, locks into place. It's really handy and just looks really nice. And my uh, when I got... I think my first apartment, like right after college, my grandma bought me 
a simple human trash can and we still use it to this day and it still looks like brand new. Like it's they're just oh, yeah. really nice. They're just really nice. I mean, again, we're talking about trash cans, but I think one of their best innovations that I don't know why everyone doesn't just do this is you can store the bags in the can. So when you remove the bag, the new bag is right behind it. You just grab it and then put it in the can and it's all, and it's fitted to the can. Why isn't everyone doing this? I don't I don't understand. Just um, I love they also, silly innovations like that. They put a hole in the bottom of their so like they have like the outer trash can, then there's like the actual bin that's inside of it. There's mm. a hole at the bottom. Do you know why there's a hole? Because when you put your bag in, it'll trap all that air. Right. No other trash cans do that. They just make it seal and then you try, yeah, then try you to put a bag and it fill up with air. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't let so you actually, actually put like the bag life in. Hacks of where you like stretch out the bag until it's like long and skinny and then stick it in and then wrap it around. Like you have to have a life hack for that or you can just get like a simple human one that just thought of it to begin with. But I know they're expensive. So yeah, it they're, is what it they're is. very pricey. I, that, it's one of those things though where like when I'm thinking about my home, maybe when I was 20, I'd be like, what are you talking about? Why would you pay, I think, $250 for a trash can? It's maddening. It's like I have this $4 one from Walmart that holds trash. Guess what? It's great. But as I get older, I, I realize like I just want things that are nicer, that are going to last longer, that do <laughs> the things that I want it to do. And stuff like Simple Human is pretty great. Like, And um, I... I have a list on like one of my bookmark lists uh, of just I love shopping at these places these are the brands I go to for my home or for what I'm doing and I just want to find more things like that and I, this is you know home kit we, we talk about smart home but I think there's smart and things that aren't necessarily things that are connected to the internet they don't have to you know be controllable by uh you know your home pod in order for them to be considered smart i think there's a lot of interesting innovations out there and i i challenge the listeners if you guys have like you know like moen or uh, simple human or these other brands that are just like come to mind when you say what do you think about when you think of a smart home appliance or device that you wouldn't necessarily or haven't heard of anywhere else that you you swear by it you're always going to buy the spatula no matter what um, let us know because I always find that kind of stuff interesting is yeah everyone knows that Ikea exists and that's a lot of fun I go spend way too much money every time I visit one but um, I feel like these smaller shops that make very unique innovative products just aren't talked about enough or aren't even known enough so always interested in learning more about that kind of stuff Absolutely. So send those back to us. You can find us all over the place. Uh, Wes is hanging out over on Mastodon. You can find me over on Twitter and on Threads. Uh, I don't know if Wes, if you're still on Threads, if you're just on Mastodon. Yeah, my account's there. I check it once a month or so. <laughs> Same. Um, yeah. Same. Um, but yeah, everybody, do the things that you do. I will put a link to the Moen faucet, the Moen motion sense stuff in the show notes. Go ahead and give us 5, 10, 20, 100 star reviews on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast. If you want to watch the video of this episode, you can go to youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider. Thanks to ZocDoc again for sponsoring this episode, and we'll catch you guys next time.